reading that, like, you think she's kind of puts it really into perspective. She was a beloved mother, grandmother, and you're making this trek from Missouri to Nevada, and you, not only does she pass away, but you have to leave her. Yeah. yeah. In the middle That's of nowhere. Why, I mean, I understand why they can't take her. Right. Just, back in those days, yeah, for sure. And and when they get to where they're going, like, they're, they're not going to be able to come back. No, no. Like, that's, she was left forever that's by wild. herself. Everybody, how you doing today? It is very bright out here in Beowawi, Nevada. Here we are. This is my friend Randy. He has a channel called Randomly Randy. We are out doing a few videos along I-80 here in Nevada. And this is a cemetery I'd read about for quite a while now. And I've always wanted to come here. Maiden's Grave Cemetery up on a bluff. There's this interesting story behind it. And we're surrounded by two geyser fields. And there's how many in the world? thousand roughly and we're near to two of them that's pretty cool yeah. and the geyser field produces dry steam yes right? okay. so we're going to take it we're going to figure out how we get into the cemetery first because it's boarded up all oh maybe up there through that walkway okay could be up there yeah it could be up there well we're going to show you but then we'll show you a really interesting grave and just walk around these desert cemeteries are nuts there's nothing around us as you saw those drone shots there is nothing out here we are about 10 miles off the highway, off the main interstate. Yeah, yeah. Nothing but beautiful, gorgeous. So the grave we want to show you the most is that one right there, the White Cross, Lucinda Duncan's grave. I'll tell you her story. But we're not exactly sure how to get in. This is barbed wire. And the barbed wire makes it a little difficult to even think about climbing across. It's a, it's a public cemetery. It's not like it's, you know, locked or anything, but off limits, but... I don't know. I'm not sure why it's so heavily barbed. Oh wow, I already see some cool looking things here. All right, we gotta figure out how to get in here. So we figured out it's not locked. It's this simple. Just gotta keep it. Yep, just gotta keep it. Uh, Need for the coyotes. The desert, and we gotta watch again. Of course, we are in the desert, so let's look out for what rattlesnakes. This is wild. It's just a cemetery up here on the bluff overlooking. Look at this. And already I'm noticing that there are some new graves here for sure. So people are still being buried out here. There's a lot of flies. The 2015, ah, <laughs> Larry Hirsch. He caught the last train out. Archie Kincaid. Some beautiful headstones here. And then you see, yeah, people come out here all the time. There's fresh flowers. Things left. 1938. She's still living. Myrna K. Gilbert. Good for you. Larry J. 2021. 
Yeah. Now where's this guy? This is what I want to see. Look at this. Isn't that interesting? Forever in our heart. We have a name here. I don't think we see. Looks like the nameplate may have fallen off. I'm not sure. Served in the Korean War, it looks like. Wow. Have you ever seen a cemetery like this? Exactly like this? Well, just up by, I mean, it's just, it's kind of like. No, this is. Right on this hill. Like, this yeah, looks right like a steep edge. hill. If all over that. What's interesting is they have the fence line all the way down there as well. It, so I see it again, you just noticed something. It's interesting. This, I mean, this is a steep hill. Right. And the fence line goes down the hill. Yeah. Like the hill's part of the cemetery. It's hard to tell, but there is a fence there. We can see it, but with the camera, it's hard. It's so bright. I hope you're able to see the fence line going down. So yeah, it could be part of the cemetery. And there is one lone grave apparently on the side of the hill. I'm gonna find that as well. Yeah, 1990, 1997. Look at this uh, Donald's grave here. You know, forever be in our hearts with a telescope. Wow. 70 years old. It's not too old. Well, I gotta be careful. I don't want to walk on any two. I don't have to. Right there. So, 1986. What do we got here? Oh, geez. 24 years old. That's sad. John Quentin Ware. And father, mother. Now, if you take a look at this, 1921 to 1976. So he was born in 1976. So this must be his grandparents, right? I would, I would think. Yeah. Make more sense if that's his grandparents. It's a young guy. Oh, that's so sad. Age 43. Oh, age 43. I was reading. I don't. It's the whole time. It says age 43. Yeah. No, I just. I just did. I just saw 20, 2000. I didn't see 2020. And he looks young in the picture. Oh, more graves here. There's no, no headstone. Yeah, just a, just a plank. I saw that a lot in my any desert cemetery that I go to. Just sometimes just stones piled up to show you where the grave is. Sometimes just old wood, wooden crosses. But its name of the cemetery, Maine's grave, got its name from Lucinda, who's that's the big white cross you see there. We're going to make our way over there and tell you about her. Crazy, these ones that... Have no marker or anything? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Still have, like, flowers on them. Yeah. People, I guess, find, figure out, they know where their, their loved ones are, I should say. And, and yeah, it's just a tiny one here. Some interesting things, though. Like... Cool. 1931. A couple of snake holes, so watch your step. That's some bad shadows coming from behind. It's only the afternoon, about four o'clock. Wow. Mother and son buried together there. Wow. Oh no. 1957-2013. Wow, look at some young photos. But when I see the graves this size, I start thinking it's a baby. Well, what is this? That says, perhaps 
They are, they are not stars in the sky, but rather openings where our loved ones shine down to let us know they are happy. That's sweet. So, that one lonely grave that I had read about that's on the side of the hill, I don't know. If it's down here, or if they meant that one right there, off to the side. Hmm. Or they could be sp speaking of her grave. Could be. Yeah. Right on the. It is right on the edge. Hers was the original. Yeah, hers was grave. the first grave here. So why don't we tell that story, Randy? We as we're approaching this in this grave, she was an older lady with a family traveling the trail, right? Yes. And she had a heart attack. They presume. Yep, they're saying heart attack, so they buried her on the side of the trail, which. I can only assume would be the, the current road. Right. And then they built these train tracks. Let's go in a little bit. Those train tracks, if, I don't know if you've seen them. We see that silver thing there. Excuse my hand. The, right there are train tracks. So when they were building the train they discovered a body, right? Yes, they found the grave. So they relocated her up to the, up to up here. To the top here. But they, and they didn't know who she was. They assumed from the the body and the bone they assumed she was a young female yep. young maiden a young maiden so they just called her the maiden which is how the cemetery got its name maiden's grave and it wasn't until years later something the family said no that's our mother grandmother the story gets a little vague from there and discovered that she wasn't actually a maiden she was a mom so the cemetery is named after her and we're passing all sorts of graves right now. Like here's one here. Oh, there's a there, oh here we go. There's a plaque over here beside her name. Is that what you said earlier? Yes. Yep. You said you could see that. Yeah. Look at the, yeah. This is the older part for sure here. Which makes sense. Yeah. 1892. Wow. Older ones here for sure. There's this. Like, all through here, there are graves. All here. Tiny little markers. Look at this. This cross. Oh, that's too bad. The ground is way too... I hope I, that's not going to stay. Yes. Yes. I, got, I got two hands. Okay. It's a little, it's a little rocky. Nice. There we go. Put that back in place. Perfect. Thanks. And yeah, headstones there. It's falling over a few, and it's crumbling. And but you still see fresh flowers. A lot of desert flowers, but fresh flowers brought. Might be that single one there. Talking. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, you're right. I don't know who it's for. Um, hard to see if there's even a name. Yeah, this is the one that I'd heard about. That's a single grave for sure, the way it looks. Ah, uh, there's a name on the side. Here we go. Oh, boy. Ow. Ca Ow, boy. <laughs> don't. Sharp. Yeah, don't touch those. How are you walking with shorts right now? Huh? That's not great. Cattenhorn. Looks like died in 1891. Can't see the. Oh, do you see the first name? Right. Oh, the, you know what? There's more than one. Oh, more than one person here. Yep. Oh, the Cattenhorn family. It looks like. Oh yeah, this one's a baby. Two years, three. Months. Oh no, really? Yep. Two years, three months. Hi. Wow. Here's the back side of it. Just a little baby. Little tiny grave here. Lived a long life, as I said, 78, 92 years old. It's a cross right there. That's, wow. It's weird. I mean, like, there's not to see, from this vantage point, you see a lot of wooden crosses, but people come out here, people are still buried here, but there's, there's some parts of the cemetery that it's going to happen in remote areas. This is remote. If we haven't stressed enough, so they're just kind of, you know. 
I don't, I don't know who looks after these cemeteries. This one's interesting. This is a cross out of like rebar. Just wow. Together with metal. What is that? Rebar? Yeah. Huh. Like, look here. There's another one right behind you. You can see by the raised ground and something up at the top here. Yeah, you can tell. Look, look at the stones going around. There's an old headstone there. Or what would have been a headstone. This is the most uncomfortable walk ever. They're all these, these are very, very sharp. And they are in our shoes now. So here we are at the grave of Lucinda Parker Duncan, the maiden's grave. I'll skim through this. It's a very, this is great. There's a lot of um, information here. And look at this beautiful view. I mean, this is incredible. You love the desert just as much as I do, right? Yeah, we were talking is, about it. This, like, is, this phenomenal. is phenomenal. This is incredible. And a, a camera can't capture it. No. Like when I get back and I do editing and stuff, I'm looking, I'm just like, ah, it's just, a, but it's beautiful. And I'm glad the viewers are here to see it. <laughs> Pretty much same with the answer. The grave of Lucinda Duncan moved a short distance in 1906. Far from being a maiden, she was a 71-year-old grandmother traveling with her family to Galena, Nevada from their home near Richmond Ray County, Missouri. Okay. Wow. So in 1863, Lucinda and her family decided to immigrate to Nevada in the middle of the gold and silver mining boom. Lucinda was called the mother of the wagon train as, as it consisted primarily of her seven surviving children, their wives or husbands, many grandchildren, and various other close relatives. Lucinda, still strong and vigorous at the age of 70, occasionally drove her own horse-drawn carriage, the only team of horses in the company of 60 ox teams and wagons. Wow. Say that she suffered a heart attack on the trail above Gravely Ford, lingered for a day, and then died the night of August 15th. Now, James Yeager, he was not, um, he was one of the contingent of non Duncans in the train, so he was traveling with him, but he wasn't a family member. This is what he said. I'm going to read this word for word. Sunday morning, 16th. An event occurred last night that has cast a gloom over our camp, the death of one of its members. An old lady, the mother and grandmother of a large part of our train. She had been sick for several days and nights before last. She became very ill, so much so our train was compelled to lay over yesterday, and last night she died. She was pious and beloved by the whole train, relatives, and strangers. Her relatives took her death very hard. All of her children and grandchildren were present, except a grandson who was in the Confederate Army. On the 17th. We left Camp Reality yesterday about noon. Before leaving, Mrs. Duncan's funeral was preached by Captain Peterson. He was the captain of another train. And by train, they mean train of carts and yes, wagons. things. Wagons, yes. I was explaining that for me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not to you, I knew you know it. Because I was looking at the train, so I was trying to get it's it right. Train. <laughs> so her, her remains were carried to its last resting place as we proceeded on our journey and up on a high point to our left, about one mile from camp. We paid our last debt and respect to the remains of the departed mother. 
There upon that wild and lonely spot we left her, until Gabriel shall sound his trumpet in the last day. The scene was truly a sad one to leave a beloved mother on the wild and desolate plains. A board with the name of the deceased was put up at the head, and boulders was laid over the grave to keep wolves from scratching in it. Uh huh. After this, the train moved on. Reading that, like you think she's kind of puts it really into perspective. She was a beloved mother, grandmother, and you're making this trek from Missouri to Nevada, and you not only does she pass away, but you have to leave her. Yeah. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Wild. I mean, I understand why they can't take her. Right. Just, Back in those days, yeah, for sure. And and when they get to where they're going, like they're, they're not going to be able to come back. No, no. Like, that's, she was left forever by wild. herself. Wow. But yeah, this is this is the maiden's grave right here. It's a huge, huge... It's, it's hard to tell on camera, but you can see the fence there. Like what? You know, this woman, poor woman, had a heart attack. Right. 150 years ago. Yeah. And now we're here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were, yeah. <laughs> it's strange. It's wild. Crazy. Wow. Another car. <laughs> it's been a while. Yes. They're moving. Yeah. Dust trail behind them. So we'll walk over here. Pretty much seen the cemetery. Fulkerson family. You've got here three, four graves. Of course, some of them, this is a large plot, so there could be many more. They're all barely, um, can't read that. Legible? Is that the word? I'm having, I think I'm having sunstroke. <laughs> wow. Barely readable, I was going to say. That are good English. Yeah, that, that ain't good English. But rest in peace to the family that's here. This is going to be a whole family. Yeah, you can't read them anymore. And they're not legible. Look at this old wooden. Just a wooden marker. Wow. Whew. Thanks, Randy. That was cool. Uh, randomly, Randy. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description. It's very bright out. Neither of us are wearing sunglasses. No. Rest in peace to everyone's buried here. Rest in peace to Lucinda. What a fascinating story. What, it's strange how we found so little online about her. Yeah, there's definitely you know, more here. Yeah, like, that, was, that was great that they had that here. So I've known about the cemetery for quite a while now. wonder if I'd ever get out here to see it because I just always saw the picture of the cross I thought that was just amazing on this big bluff finally here rest in peace Lucinda thanks for watching everybody all right peace out